So I recently launched my own graphic design studio called Questa Studio, and over the last couple weeks, I finally made a website for it. So come along with me as I walk you through the process of designing a website for my own design studio. So for the final website, I ended up using Framer. I tried a bunch of different site builders. They all have their pros and cons. By the end of the day, I think Framer is the best. If you haven't heard about it before, Framer is this dope no code website builder that helps designers like me bring their vision to life. You can build stuff from scratch with their free form editor or start from one of the templates like I did. Like I said, I don't know how to code or anything, but I figured this out over the course of a week or two and it all started with the planning. So I started this website process by figuring out what projects I wanted to put in the portfolio and what template would work the best for my type of design work. I looked through so many of the different templates, both the paid and the free ones, and my absolute favorites were probably some of the paid ones, but the free ones were like 90% as good. So I thought, let's just use that for now. So once I settled on this one, it was just a basic studio type website. I started organizing the different projects I wanted to include in this portfolio. And I also had to resize a bunch of stuff to make it web friendly. If the files are too big, they load super slow and it kind of just bogs down the whole site. It makes the user experience really bad for anyone trying to check out your work. I also at this point ended up buying the domain name for Questa Studio and a custom Gmail. In the meantime, I was just using this simple landing page for Questa Studio Studio that people could check out if they were curious after browsing the Instagram or whatever. I've been wanting to start a separate studio for my official design work for a while now. As a graphic designer who also makes content, I wanted an outlet to separate my official client design work from some of the other stuff I do as like Jesse Nyberg as a whole. And as of now, that's what that studio is going to be. At the very least, a place to host official client work for me as a freelance graphic designer but later down the road, I'm hoping to build it out more and hire on other people and take on bigger projects and just kind of see where it goes. All right, let's get into the design. I started by adding the first project and the first one I wanted to highlight was this grapes.com project. They were really cool to work with. I did a bunch of social media graphics for them and they let me do some more analog stuff and they were just really cool to work with overall. The first step from there was to switch out some of the branding and make it more my own. So I changed up the Questa Studio typography, went through the site and switched out some of the fonts from this thicker sans serif to a more grotesque thinned out font. I experimented with a few different typefaces, but at the end of the day, I went with intermedium for more of the bold stuff and then inter regular for all the body copy and smaller copy around the site. And inter is pretty similar to Noya Haas Grotesque, but it was already built into Framer. And I know it's a very web friendly font with all the variable uh, weights and everything. So to me, it was the perfect choice. I also locked in the brand colors that I've been experimenting with for Questa Studio, which were safety orange, cream and black and sometimes i'll throw in lemon as an alternative as well at first i was messing around with this light gray or cream background but i ultimately went with black because it looked good and helped the graphics pop a lot more and i feel like the general population these days is more fond of dark mode user interfaces as well so it's kind of a win-win so i basically just switched out all the white elements to this cream color and then highlighted stuff that would be important in this safety orange I really like how Framer allows for this global editing so you don't have to go in and switch out every little thing. If you make the styles for the fonts for like a header, body copy, whatever, and switch it out, it reflects across the whole site on both desktop and mobile. So the basic framework for each project page was this nice info section over here on the left and then a scrolling section on the right with the different images. Framer has this cool CMS system that lets you set up a layout for a bunch of images and then you can just go in and switch them out for each different project and it remains consistent throughout all the different pages. So I ended up going with a square container for each of the project assets. So for the posters, I either went with a blurry background taking elements from the actual design itself or just a black background with some more texture to help separate it from the entire black background of the website. And in that same CMS system, it, it's pretty cool because you can just update the copy and it'll actually reflect on the website, but you're just writing it in these simple little forms. I still needed to edit some of the smaller elements too. 
I really like this motion blur ticker thing at the top that showed the services that the studio offers, but I need to switch it out to reflect the stuff that I do more. So I put album art, poster design, things like that. At this point, I also switched out the contact button to be that safety orange and reflect the rest of the branding on the site. So once I had that Graves project pretty much locked in, I started creating square assets for all my other projects so I could figure out how I wanted to organize each one. For example, this creator camp one had these landscape oriented orientation postcards. So I just put two on each square to make it easier to scroll through. And then for some projects, they had fewer assets like this movie poster one. So I created these short GIF style videos that just loop and show some of the details on the poster. Once I got the project images mostly laid out, I started adding in the different copy and the project titles and all that. And I wanted to keep it pretty simple without a bunch of unnecessary copy and, you know, kind of allow the designs to speak for themselves. I also read this stat the other day that most users only read like 20 to 30% of the text that's on a website. So why give them more stuff to just skip over? And I've also found that talking about your design work and the methodology that went into it is one of the hardest things to do as a designer, especially when you're farther removed from actually completing the project. So you almost forget the headspace that you were in. At this point, I was feeling pretty confident in the Framer app. I got the CMS system locked in, the layout that I wanted, and I just needed to apply this same system to a few other types of projects. One being this Rumi's Deli, which is a brand identity for a sandwich shop, my Wag Me Fest brand identity, and then the Studio Experiments Gallery. I actually haven't even included this Rumi's Deli project in my own personal portfolio. So it took me a little longer to gather all the assets, but I was excited to finally share it. I was pretty stoked on how this project turned out. And I think it's good to go outside your comfort zone every once in a while and work on stuff that people may not expect you to do. So I set up the Rumi's Deli and the Wag Me Fest project simultaneously because they pretty much followed the same type of brand identity system and a similar format in the assets that I wanted to showcase. And at this point, I actually had to work on my MacBook because I was spending all day taking care of my partner Erica, running around to some different dentist appointments. But it's nice because Framer has the autosave built in and I can edit it on my computer or on my Mac, wherever I'm going. I fucked up though and forgot to bring all the assets on an SSD. So I mainly focused on finishing up all the messaging, layout, and overall branding of the site. I updated the lower part of the website that has the services section and the little about me text block. I made sure the services at the bottom reflected the same as the services up top, so it was all consistent. Um, I set up some of the more backend stuff at this point, like the favicon, the name of the website, all the SEO crap, and even just a little social preview type image. You know, the one that would show up on when you're linking it on Twitter or whatever. I didn't finish it at this point, but I got to it later. Here it is. When I got back home, I started setting up a new contact form because the template currently had a page that all it did was allow you to copy your email, but I wanted less friction between a potential client and reaching me. So I set up a simple form where they can message me and figure out what kind of project they want to work on. Once everything was almost done, I just had to finish uh, plugging in the assets for the rest of the projects and set up a page for the studio experiments. Similar to what I have on my personal portfolio site or stuff I post on Instagram, I just wanted this to be kind of a gallery of various one-off concept and personal projects. The main difference though is on my personal site, I do a lot of more concept stuff for actual things. But for here, I don't want to include any real bands, IP, anything official because I want a clear separation between the personal studio artwork and the actual official client work. So this will probably just be an ever evolving section that I constantly switch out my favorite stuff. And the reason I still want to include this, even though it's an official studio and this is just concept work, is it shows to prospective clients what you're capable of and the type of stuff you like to do and just some more your perspective and taste. And I think it's good at the end of the day, once a client knows you're competent to work with as a professional and you make dope stuff, it doesn't matter too much the big brands or whatever you worked with in the past. I think they just wanna see the cool type of stuff that you can offer them. So I basically just set up a bunch of posters I've made in the past, some playlist cover art and other one-off graphics in Photoshop and displayed them in alternating order. The site was basically done at this point. I just had to add a few more projects fix some small details, and we were there. I don't wanna to be too redundant with the process though, so let me just show you the final reveal. All right, so let's go over the final website. 
Give it a little refresh. Got the nice animation that loads in. Quest to Studio up here. This is the little ticker box I was talking about with all the services that we offer. Contact us. Nice little contact form. You know, link to Instagram and whatnot. Grapes Project, Creator Camp, Rumi's Deli. So you just scroll through. These are the featured projects on the homepage. And if you want to see all the projects, once I add more, you can go here to All Works. And then we can scroll down even more. There's only one additional one right now, but you know, later we'll probably add more. Here's what we offer, you know, to an extent, I think uh, there's more stuff too, but album art, poster design, visual identity, art direction, strategy. For this image, I just put something random that I made, like this little mosh pit style thing, just to kind of maybe tie into the description right here and give some more, you know, like, perspective on the type of style and the, the thing as I like to do or the things I mess with. Let's have a chat. This also just links over to the contact form. So I'll show you some of the projects. We have the little description box right here. And I like these type of uh, columns on the left right here that stay sticky like this. So um, it stays there, you know, as you scroll. So you still have the context of the project. Grapes, bunch of cool social media graphics that I did. Little uh, analog style animation. And I made sure all the projects kind of load in with that subtle animation. And what I like about this site is you already have the recommended ones down here. You don't have to go back, choose a project. Once you're at the bottom, you can go to the next one. You got Creator Camp, some postcards, water bottle I designed, simple posters, just some fun stuff. Rumi's Deli, like I said, this was a fun project. I got to create this little character. Um, some cool type, I uh, actually got this handwritten type from uh, Kern Club. We did uh, some social media graphics, some merch concepts, different stuff like that. I was actually really happy with this uh, loyalty card using the little thumbs up from the character. Here's Dyson Steel, a poster design that I did for this short film. And so what I was saying is this is the cover image and this is what actually goes into the image right here so you want a good one to reflect on what's on the cover we got the official poster that little gif i was talking about to show some of the details and just a quick mock-up and the last thing i'll show you is the studio experiments page right here cuesta i made this playlist far before i was going to name the studio after my last name and mexican heritage so we have some playlist art some posters and what i was trying to get at is this is the type of style of stuff I really like. So I'm hoping that potential clients will see this stuff, mess with it and uh, wanna work in this style. But that's pretty much it. I'm pretty stoked with how the studio website has turned out so far. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this one. And if you wanna check out my website more, I'll link it in the description below. That's it for now and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.